Hello and welcome to the Pennsylvania IMAP Invasives Observation Data Entry Tutorial. My name is Amy and I'm going to be taking you through the process and showing you how to enter in an observation into IMAP. So to start with, we're here at our main login page and the URL for this page is www.imapinvasives.org slash PAIMI slash login. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my login information, my username and my password, and click on login. And as we can see here, our main navigation page shows up. And there's a lot of different things on here, a lot of different resources. But for observation data entry, we're going to go here on the left hand side and we're going to choose enter data. And so another window pops up here. And this is going to be the start of our process for entering in an observation. So step one is asking us to incorporate some photographs. And this is by far probably one of the most important steps in our process uh, for entering in observation data entry. Um, this is uh, how our IMAP Invasive staff is actually going to be able to confirm an observation because we'll be able to see exactly what it was that you were seeing in the field. And so there's different types of photographs that you can include and they're going to be over here on the left hand side we can see there's a close-up photo there's infestation there's scale and scale is referring to if you would put like a ruler or a coin in your photograph to help to show the size of exactly what it was that you were uh, looking at and then there's some other types of photos as well so you could put one picture in each category and so in order to do that I'm going to go ahead and click on browse and choose a photo that's already been saved onto my computer and that's going to upload here as we see and the image is going to show up here in this window on the left side so just make sure that's the right photo that you wanted and make sure to, to properly credit the person that took that photograph so I took this particular picture so I'll put my name here uh, just keep in mind too um, not even just for close-up photographs, but for, for most of the photographs you'll be taking, try to fill the frame uh, of your picture as much as possible with the, the thing that you're taking a picture of. Uh, distance photographs and photos from far away are not such a good idea because it's not going to let us see very well what it was that you're taking a picture of. So just keep that in mind. So once you've got all the photographs in, incorporated into this first step, you're going to click on the arrow here on the right and that will advance you through the process. Now we're at step two and it's asking um, who th did the actual observation. And so the default here at the top says yes I am the observer and if that's true you'll you'll just keep that answer selected. But if the um, ob observation was made by someone else you'll click on the second thing that says no I'm entering data for and you'll select the, the drop down menu here and there's a long list of names that we've got registered IMAP uh, accounts for a bunch of different people and so you can choose from that list uh, to choose the person who did the observation but if the person's name isn't in that list you'll choose this last option that says no but the observer is not listed and from here you can just send us an email that includes that person's name and email address and we'll go ahead and create an IMAP account for them uh, so that we can incorporate that person's information into the database so just keep in mind, if the person's name isn't in the list at present, you will not be able to uh, continue on with this particular observation until an account has been created for that person. So just keep that in mind. So for now, we'll just say yes, I am the observer, and we'll go on to step three. And step three is asking us if we're entering data for a project. And so a project in IMAP is uh, a way to group uh, different types of data together into one. So it makes it a little bit easier to query uh, when, you're, when you're looking for groups of data. And so for example, Pennsylvania Sea Grant has their Pennsylvania, um, their zebra and quagga mussel database. And so that's just a, a nice way to, to group all that data together so that they can find it very quickly and easily in our database. And so um, if you are or you're not putting in uh, information for a project, you would just choose that from here, yes or no. Here's just a list of some of the projects that I'm involved in. So for now, we'll just say no, I'm not entering data for a project. And we'll go on to step four. And step four is asking us what species it was that we observed. And so there's different categories as we see here. There's animal, insect, and plant. And at present, Pennsylvania IMAP only has information for animals and plants. 
We do not have any insect data right now, but we're hoping to get some of that data later on down the road. So there's different ways to choose the species. You can choose by common name or by scientific name. And so I'll click on the drop down here. And the photo I uh, used was from uh, purple loose strife that I had seen. And so I'll choose that here. And as you can see uh, in the scientific name box down here, that the scientific name auto populates by itself. So those lists are tied together. As soon as I choose um, something from one list, the other list uh, finds the appropriate answer and that incorporates there. And so just double check the photograph that comes up here on the right hand side and just make sure that that is uh, the species that you are entering an observation in for. You can click on that photo and it'll uh, make it larger so that you can see the, the picture more closely and what's, uh, what's in the picture. And also this further species information link is really uh, handy because it will show you uh, further information about the species that you are entering in observation data entry for. And so here we can see the USDA website brought up more information about purple loose stripes so that I can uh, browse around and get more information about that particular species. Um, so once we're done here, we'll go on to step five. And step five is asking us when we made the observation. And so there's a calendar that appears, and uh, the calendar defaults to the current day, and so today is August 6th. Um, but there's different ways to navigate through this calendar. You can use this arrow here on the left to go back through different months, and so you can navigate that way. Or you can click on the title bar, and that will bring up a listing of all the current months in the year. And you can navigate um, by clicking on the, the different months. Um, if you have really old data, you can click on the year, and then a listing of, of different years will pop up there. And again, you can use the arrows here to navigate to the, the year that you're interested in. And then choose a date that way. And so we'll just go ahead and we'll choose a day. And go on to step six in our process. And step six is asking us where we made our observation. So this search by coordinate box is useful if you were uh, using a GPS unit out in the field and you were able to collect coordinates. Uh, you would just choose the coordinate system that you were using and you would then fill in the appropriate information in the latitude and longitude boxes over here on the right hand side and then choose update map. Uh, but if, for example, you weren't using a GPS unit but you know maybe about where you were and you have an address, you can go ahead and put that address in this search box and hit go. And then our map here um, two maps down at the bottom will zoom in to the spot that you just uh, asked for. And so I typed in the address here at our office in Pittsburgh at the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy. And so I do want to show you quickly um, panning these maps. These maps are tied together. So if I pan on the right hand side on the zoomed out version of the state, this, uh, the map on the left will also move as well. Um, and so you can't see it as well, but if I pan on the left hand side, this map on the right will also move, but again, you can't see that as well because we are zoomed out farther. Uh, so I'm just going to go back again to that point that I, I already looked up here in Pittsburgh. And I do want to point out the zoom ladder here on the left-hand side. Each map has it. You can zoom uh, to get a closer view of, of where it was that you made your observation. And uh, this black dot and the, the larger blue circle here, this black dot is what we're moving around to get to where exactly we made the observation. That's the point that you're going to be making. And so once you're satisfied with where that dot is on the map to uh, represent your observation point, you can go ahead and go to the last step, step seven. And this is just a summary of all the information that we've input. And so it's telling me the observer and saying, I am the observer. I, I found purple loose strife. I'm not entering data for a project. This is the date that I did my observation on, and here's the location information. So if any of this information is not correct or needs to be updated, you can use this arrow on the left-hand side, or you can choose from any of the numbers at the top to go back to a step in the process and change information. But if everything looks okay, then you can go down here to the bottom and just hit Submit Observation. And so there's a few options that do pop up here. You can submit an assessment, you can view your observation on a map, or you can submit another observation. And so I do want to show you here uh, for viewing your observation on a map. It will bring up our map feature that we have here in IMAP. And um, 
as we as the page loads here um, it will show us a red circle with the number one inside and that number one is representing the observation that we just created and we can see that here on our map and so that's nice and, and handy you can see that um, but I do want to point out here this ID number this number is specific to the observation that you just created it's tied to directly to it and if we click on that it will then take us to the record that we just created for our observation and so as we see here uh, here's our ID number at the top and over on the left hand side is just a summary of the information that we just put in my name the date um, the species that I observed and so so on here's the map again with the yellow dot pointing out exactly where our observation point is here's our coordinates and a photograph again that I input in um, but as we scroll down here I'm in the uh, general information section as I scroll down here there's other boxes that we can put in further information to talk more about our observation and so this observation comments box is a nice little place to put in things like field notes or other species of interest that you may have seen while out in the field uh, what the weather was that day anything that you think might be really important to incorporate into your observation go ahead and put that here uh, this location determination method is asking you how you figured out where you were so if you were using a GPS unit or if you were using the IMAP invasive state entry map that we were just looking at a minute ago uh, or if you were using a paper map these are all options to choose from uh, your observation method were you on foot when you found the species that you observed? Uh, were you using a boat? Were you diving? Were you using a canoe, kayak, or rowboat? Again, different options you can choose from. The site access field is asking you if you encountered any issues uh, while you were making your observations. So was there a gate that you had to open and get through? Was there a homeowner that you had to ask permission to get on a particular piece of property? Uh, and then site directions. Uh, this is just a, a place to say exactly how you got to the place that you made your observation and try to be as specific as possible because if someone else is trying to get back to this spot as well they're going to need as many details as possible so be sure to include things like road names um, landmarks special geological features anything you think might help in order to lead someone back to that particular place um, and i do want to point out here the data status the data status will automatically come up as unconfirmed because this is a new observation and it hasn't had a time or a chance yet to be reviewed by an IMAP invasive staff member but as soon as someone does review it um, they'll either confirm it or they'll get in touch with you and say I need to see additional photographs or I need to see the specimen in order to properly identify uh, what it was that you were looking at. Um, so then as we continue on down here this related records section is for when other information like uh, as listed here assessments surveys and treatments uh, when those uh, type information types are added um, and, and that's always an option in IMAP if you'd like to to do those things um, and then additional information will come up there then if information was added for those things some of the information is pre-populated by IMAP so we can see here the data entry method was online um, continuing on down to repository information this section is for if you collected a voucher specimen in the field and you submitted it to like a museum or herbarium and here's a long list of places to choose from that you may have submitted it to um, and then additional information concerning the specimen and again the geography information this section is all pre-populated by IMAP so nothing in here is stuff that you can edit yourself so if you did make any changes or updates in the record, you want to make sure that you hit this update observation button down at the very bottom. And then that will save any changes that you made. So as this loads, um, we pretty much went over everything that you'll need to know for entering in an observation into IMAP. So I hope, th I hope this uh, video has been helpful to you. If you do have any additional questions, don't hesitate to get a hold of us. Uh, all of our Contact information is available on the Pennsylvania IMAP Invasives uh, homepage, so please get a hold of us if you need to. So I thank you for uh, listening in on this tutorial, and, uh, and have a great day.